what is up guys this is nightmare and today i have a new build video for you all this is my stamina dragonite builds for the wolf hunter update this is a pvp build and i am calling it the berserker knight this build is something a little bit different than my other builds i usually work on my past builds i focus on two main things high weapon damage and burst combo damage and sustain either magic or stamina recovery whatever build i'm running however for this build i completely changed it up instead of making damage and recovery or sustain my top priorities i made being tanky with high survivability my main priority and then damage and sustain came second which you will see with the sets i'm running now, although we focus on being very tanky with this build, I still made sure that we still have a lot of damage output. As you see, I will have around 4,500 weapon damage with the sets I'm running. And then our recovery is still pretty good with being a Dragonite, getting our resources back from ultimates, etc. Using two-handed passives to also boost our stam recovery so on and so forth you'll see so with that let's get right into the gear and um the main uh items we're going to be using so first off what i'm using is the asylum great sword and i'm using this on the front bar this is our main bar <clears throat> excuse me so asylum great sword with nern honed trait just to boost that weapon damage up even higher and then we're running a disease enchant disease enchant is very strong because of the major defile that it can proc this is just going to help us burst down very tanky targets that heal a lot like heavy armor uh, templars etc this is going to help us kill them better with the reduction to their healing so disease enchant's very good with stamina builds i usually run it a lot if not disease then i'll run uh, sometimes I run fire on Dragonite, sometimes I run shock on sorcerers, and I don't really r need to run disease on Nightblades anymore because uh, disease uh, enchant procs major defile and in cap also procs major defile, so you can swap it up accordingly. But for this build, like I said, Asylum Greatsword, Nern Hone, disease enchant, and the main reason why we're using this is the two handed passive. And whenever you execute with reverse slash, we're using executioner, you're going to generate 14 ultimate. So this doesn't mean that you have to execute a kill to get the 14 ultimate. If it's a tanky target and they're sitting below 50% health for an extended period of time and you're slashing this executioner on them multiple times, you're building ultimate every time it hits. So at around 25% health on the enemy, you're getting the 14 ultimate every time at about 50% health or 50, yeah 50% health they you don't really get the full ultimate because it varies based off how much health they have but if you're going to town executing someone on 25% health and they're just floating there you're going to get ultimates like crazy so this is going to help our sustain because of the ultimate recovery that it gives us and we're a dragonite so the more ultimates we put out, the more damage we put out, of course, it's an ultimate, the more burst, com burst combos we get, but it's also going to restore health, stamina, and magicka to us. So I really like Asylum Greatsword, comes in handy with its builds. Next up, I'm using the Master's Bow. Master's Bow infused with a weapon damage enchant. This is pretty much the only damaging set that we're running other than our three-piece um, set jewelry set that i'll show you, you later but the master's bow is very important for this build and this is where most of our weapon damage stat comes from as you can see infused weapon damage enchant gives us 450 weapon damage and then any target that is applied with poison arrow or poison injection you're going to do 300 more uh you're going to get 300 more weapon damage when attacking that target so you're going to open up on the bow and then just focus them down with your main bar 
on, with the greatsword. Uh, before I move on, the reason why we're using greatsword is because of your two-handed passives. You're getting swords increased damage done by 5%. If you used an axe, you'd get more bleed. If you used a mace, you'd get more physical penetration. I prefer swords, but you can use whatever you got, really. I know Asylum is a little bit trickier for most players to get. But um, it, it is very important for this build. So is the Master's Bow, another item that is a little tricky to get. I'll explain some other sets that you can move around if you don't have um, the Masters and Asylum weapons. Next up, for our two-piece monster set, we're using Bloodspawn. Two-piece Bloods, Bloodspawn, both uh, heavy. So we're running seven heavy with this build. Ideally, you would want five heavy, one medium, one light. I just don't have a medium helmet or a light shoulder at the moment, so I'm running what I got. Bloodspawn is going to be very important. It's going to increase our sustain and our tankiness. So sustain-wise, we're getting a one-piece stand recovery bonus, and then we're also getting um, ultimate back. So that's our way of getting sustained through a Dragonite with Bloodspawn, and then we're getting tankiness. Whenever it procs, we're getting 6200 weapon, or sorry, physical and spell resistance for six seconds. And this uh, will proc quite often whenever you're taking a lot of heat, a lot of damage. So this is an ideal set for a Dragonite. My head is infused with a tri-stat glyph on there at the moment. Uh, I might change it in the future to just a regular stamina glyph, but this is the only multi-effect enchant I have on. We're running six impin and one infused, so this is the one infused piece with a tri-stat glyph. And then the shoulder is impin stamina enchant. Our main five piece set we're going to be using is going to be Pariah. Pariah is going to be all impin, all stamina enchants. Um, now Pariah the two piece is going to give us max health, three and four piece physical and spell resistance. Very nice. It's going to make us very tanky. And if you're not aware of what prize five piece does, it's very interesting. As your health gets lower, your physical and spell resistance gets higher. When this is gold, it's about 11,000 physical and spell resistance. And from what I remember, unless this was nerfed, the full 11,000 physical and spell resistance bonus is given to you around 50% health. I could be wrong, correct me down in the comment section below, but from what I'm seeing it's around 50%, somewhere in that range. So you're probably thinking now, this is a lot of physical and spell resistance. That's true. So as you can see, if we buff up with just our resistance buff on the two-handed bar, we have 30,000 spell and 27,000 physical. That is without Pariah and without Bloodspawn. With everything procced up, we sit at about 40,000 spell and 37 physical. With that, that's with Pariah. And then another 6,000 gets us around 46,000 sp uh, spell and roughly, let's say, 30... Well, my math is really janky right now. 43? 43,000 physical? Somewhere around there. That's with Bloodspawn and Pariah active. So now you're you're thinking, and you're clicking off the video now, that's too much physical and spell resistance, you're an idiot. That is completely wrong. The reason why we are overcapped on physical and spell resistance is because of penetration. A lot of people forget that. They think... Okay, I'm going to get to the hard cap on physical res spell resistance. That's as much resistance as I need in PvP. That's very wrong. And before I go any farther, the hard cap is 33,000. I'm just going to put that out there. Anyways, why do we go over the physical and spell resistance hard cap of 33,000? Why do we go to nearly 50,000 physical and spell resistance? And like I said, it's penetration. Penetration is everywhere in pvp you have night blades running around with surprise attacks shredding your armor you have mark target shredding your armor you have power of the light from templars shredding armor you have sword and board puncture shredding armor you have so many t different types of people 
shredding your armor down, right? That's an instant 5k loss right there. Furthermore, you have a lot of Magicka Nightblades and Magicka Sorcerers running around right, right now. What does that mean? They're using Destruction Staff, right? Destruction Staff is going to give you increased, or it's going to ignore 10% spell resistance. Um, this is 5% because I don't have it leveled, but if it was level 2, it'd be 10% penetration on spell resistance, or it ignores 10% spell resistance. That is also very huge. So not only are you getting shredded, they're ignoring 10% of your spell resistance. Um, and also for this build, we're a vampire. This is going to be very important. Uh, I'll explain it later on. But you're also going to be taking... Um, it's not in there. Let me see if it's here. 25% more damage from fire. There's a lot of fire damage in, in PvP too. So the increased resistance is going to help us with that also. Um, I'm sure there's more um, you could think of. Uh, just count it in. There's lots of different ways of getting your armor shredded down in PvP. So, it's not bad to be over the, over the hard cap. That's all I'm trying to say. So moving on is our three-piece agility set. All robust, all weapon damage enchants. This is very nice because it gives us 1400 stamina and almost 190 weapon damage. So that is pretty much the full builds. All the uh, items, weapons, and uh, armor we're using. The potions I'm using right now are these Essence of Immovability. We get Major Savagery, uh, Stamina Return, Sam Recovery, and then Immune to Knockback. These are very good potions. Um, and then sometimes I use these lingering health potions for major vital vitality and the health every second. These are very nice. Recently I've been coming across a lot of AIDS builds, cancers builds, whatnot, and a lot of dot stacking. So I'm having quite a bit of trouble healing. I know my resistance is good, but I'm having trouble getting my health back up. So that is due to a lot of major defile and minor defile being stacked on me when I, whenever I try to get an X clip. And then also uh, lots of dots being applied. So these should help a lot since we don't have a cleanse. So these two potions are very good. The food I'm using, which I am out of, I just recently ran out of it, is the Dubious Command Throne. So Stam Recovery, Max Stam, and Max Health. These are very good. Alright, so moving on, um, let's go over my skills next. I'm going to go over my 2H bar, which is my main bar first. So first off, we have Critical Rush. This is my gap closer, and it is a uh, little bit of damage. It always crits pretty good. I like having a gap closer, especially on a BD, uh, excuse me, a heavy armor builds. So we're a lot slower. We can get kited around very easily, especially against Magicka Nightblades and Magicka Sorcerers. They will kite you all day around Cyrodiil and at Battlegrounds. So the gap closer is very important. If you think you're uh, too good for a gap closer, use Cleave. It is a good dot and uh, it's good pressure. Our main spammable and my least favorite thing about this build is Dizzing Swing. This is our main knockup uh, in CC and it's big burst damage. So, it's really strong, and why do I say it's my least favorite is because it has a one second cast time, and a lot of people nowadays who play this game know how to counter the dizzing swing. Uh, they're just good at it. Pe players are getting better. Um, they'll walk through you, they'll move away from you, they'll dodge it, block it. They know how to counter dizzing swing now. That's all I'm going to say, but um, I still rather prefer using this than running sword and board and doing little to no damage with puncture or heroic slash. Um, the 2H is just more of my style. Moving on, we have Camouflage Hunter. This is for 3% weapon damage because it's a fighter skilled ability. And then we're also getting major, major savagery at all times with this bar, so 10% more crit. 
Um, I usually, in the past, never used this. Um, I know Despotic, a good friend of mine, he uses this on his heavy armor stamina DK. Um, in the past, I used to run medium armor DK, so I already had a lot of crit chance. But now that I'm trying to run heavy, um, I want to get crit chance, so I'm trying to play around with it. It is also very nice because you can re remove night blades from stealth. Um, it works decently, about 50% of the time. But before in the past, I used Venomous Claw, and I still go back and forth between the two. Venomous Claw is a very good damage over time ability, and it al is also going to apply a slow with warmth, a 30% slow for 3 seconds. So you can play around with that. This is just going to be another ability you can cast on your opponent for, for pressure with a dot. Whereas Camouflage Hunter is going to give you permanent crit chance, permanent 3% weapon damage, and you can remove Night Blades from stealth. So that's something you can play around with with your builds and how you adjust this build to your liking. Next up is our Execute. We're using Executioner. Um, in the past, I was using Reverse Slice, but with this build and using Asylum Greatsword, I found that Executioner was more beneficial. When we get them into Execute range, we want to make sure we're doing as much damage to them as possible. So, this is important. You have to run this if you're running Asylum Greatsword. Um, and before I move on, if you don't have an Asylum Greatsword, another op option for you to use is Maelstrom. But anyways, Executioner. It's very good. And then we use Rally with this build. Um, this is a burst heal. Gives us 20% weapon damage buff through Major Brutality. And then it's a heal over time. And like I said, it's a burst heal. So a lot of people nowadays use forward momentum to remove snares. But DK has got to do buff this patch with Reflective Fleet. That gives us a, a immunity to immobilization and snares. And I don't even have this fully leveled yet. Um, as you can see, it's only level 3. But at level 5, it should be 3 to 4 seconds. Right now, it's 2 seconds for me. But it's still really good. And then on our main bar, ultimate, is Dawnbreaker Smiting. So another 3% weapon damage. And uh, it's really good burst damage. In the past, I also used Dragon Leap. They're about the same cost. Take Flight is the one you were take using. Reduced cost and increases damage and range. So it's a little bit cheaper. It's a gap closer too. It does a lot more uh, burst damage, upfront damage. It's really fun to use also just to leap in people's face. But um, Dawnbreaker Smiting is really good with a dot. So I've been playing around with that too. This is something else that I know despotic uses so despotic is a really good player if you don't uh, follow him or subscribe to him I definitely recommend it uh, I'm trying to learn from his videos and from his builds um, I'm definitely not as good as the players as I want to be and uh, I'm trying to take advice from other players so camouflage hunter and Dawnbreaker smiting are two choices that I'm using because of despotic so thank you moving on to our bow bar poison injection we need this for the master's bow this is a good pressuring ability ranged uh, and it executes once they drop below 50% health which is very nice like I previously stated reflective plate removes snares cost magicka but it also reflects for projectiles very strong ability Volatile Armor, this is our main resistance buff, very important. This is, can also remove Night Blades from stealth. This is what I used to use in the past. It's an AoE, so that's why I can remove Night Blades from stealth. And then our last third Magicka ability is Fragmented Shield. Main reason why you're using this is not for the shield, but for Major Mending. 25% increased healing done for 5 seconds. So, Fragmented Shield into Vigor. Vigor is our main heal over time, but very important to survivability. So you're comb combining Fragmented Shield, Major Mending, with Vigor, a heal over time, with Rally, with, which is a burst heal. Volatile Armor is... Sorry, I keep doing that. 
Volatile Armor is also a Draconic Power ability, which will give us this 12% increased healing received passive, which is very nice. So the thing with this build, which actually in my opinion makes it very fun in Battlegrounds, where sustain is a little bit harder, is we have three magic costing abilities. One's 2700, one's 3600, and the most is uh, 4050. When you're in combat, you can go through a rotation, and you're going to have to pick and choose on which magicka abilities you're going to be using. Um, this is a little bit easier now that I went vampire, which we get more uh, magicka recovery, so it doesn't make it as hard. But um, it definitely takes some more skill to know which magicka ability you will need to cast. Of course, your top priority is volatile armor just because it does so much more for you. High resistance buff, it's going to also give you 12% increased healing received. If you're snared, or you're getting pressured by ranged casters, Magicka Nightblades, uh, Bow Gankers, Magicka Sorcerers, etc., Reflective Plate is really good. Also really good for removing snares. And then Fragmented Shield is going to be something that you're going to want to cast if you're on low in health, you want to boost your healing output. So that pretty much covers that. And then our ultimate for this bar is currently Crosip Armor. This is just for if I have the ultimate built up and I get ganked, I'm able to throw this up, uh, put up all my buffs, get some healing. This is just really good because it reduces all damage incoming to you by 3%. And it also allows you to ignore physical resistance on your attacker. So this is our defensive ultimate. This is our offensive ultimate. I'm going to go over passives real quick. Uh, you're taking all of them. But most importantly, you have combustion. So this is going to increase damage of your poison status effects. And then it's also going to restore stamina. So if you choose to go with Venomous Claw, this is going to indirectly help your stamina sustain this is due to it being a poison damage it can proc combustion so that is another alternative warmth again with your um, venomous claw it's going to apply slow this is going to increase your damage on venomous claw and then flame and poison area effect abilities which we don't really have any other than Corrosive Armor. And then I believe Volatile Armor is also... Okay, this is magic damage. And this is only Flame and Poison. Anyways, Draconic Power. Reduce Block. Pretty decent. We don't hard, hard cast Block on this build. But it can get you out of some sticky situations. 12% increased healing re received, like I keep saying. Health Recovery is higher on the bow bar than the 2h bar it doesn't really matter because we're a vampire skilled armor is higher spell resistance this is really good like i just said for a vampire we take increased flame uh damage earth and heart is probably the most important and most unique thing to dragonites so i'm talking about battle war when we use ultimate we get health magicka and stamina back very fun to use and this is pretty much what this build is revolved around for getting uh, our stamina back for re recovery, sustain, and then our damage output is also really good because of the amount of ultimates we get. Mountain's Blessing is also very good because we can get minor brutality stacked with major brutality by using fragmented shield, so this is going to help our weapon damage go up, and then we're also getting ultimate back whenever we use fragmented shield. Helping Hands restores stamina when we use Fragmented Shield also. Two-handed passives, you're using all these. Um, the most important one is Battle Rush, because with this build, it's heavy armor. We don't really have a high base stam recovery. However, with a potion active and after a kill with Executioner, our stam recovery jumps up to just about 2,000. And that is due to Battle Rush. And then, uh, like I previously stated, swords increase weapon damage by 5%. So we're using a two-headed sword for that reason. 
bow passives. Most importantly, my favorite is Haste Retreat, Major Expedition for 5 seconds after roll dodging. Um, that is just for me coming from medium armor builds. I roll dodge a lot, so it's still nice to keep this very handy in Battlegrounds also, which is a hive movement, uh, fast action PvP mode. Heavy armor passives, we're taking all of these. If you choose to go 5 heavy, 1 medium, 1 light. Your most important ones are Dexterity, Wind Walker, and Improved Sneak, I guess, and Athletics, and then Recovery, and this one here. That's pretty much it. Alright, so getting into Vampire. Why did I go Vampire with this build? First off, Supernatural Recovery, 10% Magic and Stam Recovery for both bars. As compared to me running Werewolf and putting Werewolf on my back bar, I only had 15% Stam Recovery on the back bar. This is a lot better for this build. This is the main focus for our uh, recovery. And then next up, this is the main reason, Undeath Passive. 33% uh, reduced damage when you fall below 50% health. This comboed with Pariah makes you extremely, extremely tanky and hard to kill. And that's pretty much my main reasons for going Vampire. I definitely recommend going Vampire if you're using this build. It makes a world of a difference. Fighter skilled passives. This is Slayer. This is what's increasing our weapon damage on the 2H bar. 3% uh, right now because we have Dawnbreaker smiting on. We threw on Camouflage Hunter, it would be 6%. As you can see there. Banish the Wicked is going to give us ultimate when we kill Daedra or Undead. This is very important for running through sewers. Um, I can pull a whole room, drop a Dawnbreaker, halfway through killing the group, drop another Dawnbreaker, and then as the room is cleared, I still have another Dawnbreaker before I leave the room. So that's very nice. Undaunted passives, you're going to make sure you have these if you're running 511. Assault passives, the most important is combat frenzy. Whenever you get a kill, 20 ultimate. Um, this is also comboed very nicely with the Asylum 2H sword. Main theme with this build is getting kills, getting ultimate, and then sustaining, and then getting more kills. So that's the main reason why this build performs as good as it does. Furthermore, the racial choice for this build is Redguard. I used to be Khajiit. Um, this was my first character ever made, and it was a Khajiit uh, werewolf. And I changed it to a Redguard vampire specifically for this build. Redguard is very important. 9% stab recovery, 10% max stam, and then adrenaline rush. Uh, as a Khajiit, I just couldn't sustain my stamina good enough. Redguard has completely changed that. Alchemy, medicinal use is also very important. So that pretty much covers passives and skills. So up next, I'll go over my champion point setup, starting with the blue tree. 75 into mighty, this is for 14% increased physical and poison disease damage, very nice. And then I run 72 master at arms. We have a lot of burst uh, direct damage attacks, so we're getting 23% increased damage with that. 37 into Blessed, highly recommend at least putting 37 into Blessed. Uh, this increases your healing done, very important. We have 28 into Precise Strikes, since we do have some decent crit chance. And then 40 into Thaumaturge. Um, if you're just running uh, Poison Arrow, Venomous Claw, Volatile Armor also has a dot, and then your Dawnbreaker of Smiting has a dot. Also, Crows of Armor has a dot. So you ha do have quite a few dots with this build. Um, but you can pull some out of Thaumaturge. I may do that in the future. And then we threw the rest of our points into Piercing for 8% uh, increased physical penetration. Um, also, this is another reason why we go over the hard cap with um, physical and spell resistance is because of piercing and uh, elfborn no sorry spell erosion so champion points can also increase penetration 
Moving on, we have 40 into Ironclad, 16% reduced direct damage taken. 40 into Thick Skins, again, 16% reduced direct damage done. Or, I mean, uh, damage over time, excuse me. Then we have 31 into Resistance for increased crit resistance. And then 37 Quick Recovery. Also recommend at least putting 37 into Quick Recovery. 9% increased healing received. Then we have 56 into both, both Hardy and Elemental Defender. 12% reduced damage across the board. Unchained Passive is very important uh, for Stamina Sustain. And then Last Stand is very important for getting our ultimates. If for some reason we drop below 20% health, we're going to get Major Heroism which is going to increase our ultimate gains. Moving on to the green tree, 75 Mooncalf, 14% stam recovery, 37 Arcanist for 9% magic recovery. Uh, we do have some pretty decent magic recovery with this build, which is needed since we have three pretty expensive, very important defensive magic abilities with this build. 27 Tenacity for 7% re uh, increased stamina returns on heavy attacks. 47 Siphoner, 40 Warlord, 3 Sprinter, and then 51 Tumbling. You can remove some from Tumbling if you choose to. Like I previously stated, I have come from medium armor builds. It's what I'm comfortable with, so it's a habit of mine to roll dodge a lot. That's why I have so many into Tumbling. But you can change this if you see fit. And that pretty much covers the champion points. Alright guys, so I'm going to just show you my buffed up stats real quick. Uh, I'm going to let these guys kind of uh, beat on me and I'm going to take some damage so I can show you how my stats look once they're getting buffed up. So as you can see right now, let me actually activate Volatile Armor. So we're at 40% health, 36,000 spell, 33,000 physical, still going up. 25% uh, health, Blood Spawn is active. 9% health, we're at 44,000 and 41,000. I'm going to heal up real quick. So from the looks of it, actually, I don't think Pariah is really uh, stopping any time uh, soon at high health. It looks to me like it's still increasing in resistance even as I drop below 25% health. Uh, I'm gonna keep getting beat up here for a quick minute, see if I can drop down below 50 again. So I'm at 80, 33,000 spell, 36,000 physical. 50, 41,000 spell, 38,000 physical. That was with blood spawn active. 30%, 36,000, 33,000, 37,000, 34,000. Alright, let me show you my weapon damage real quick. So with just my major and minor brutality, that's 36,000 weapon damage. Or, sorry, 3,600 weapon damage. With the bow... Course, I get stunned there, but 42,000 weapon damage. Again, 42,000 weapon damage. And we are missing another 301 to be exact from the Master's Bow. So, really, we're looking at uh, 4,500 weapon damage, roughly 46,000 spell, 43,000 uh, 3, physical. And then I'll show you my stam recovery fully buffed real quick. If I can just find someone else to kill. Oh, okay, there's a guy here. Perfect. So I'm going to hit a potion after executing 1751 stam recovery. And that should be with... I'm going to pick this up real quick. That should be with everything. We're going to try one more time, though. In 1750. Um, so uh, earlier, I guess when I saw it at 2000 recovery, it was because I had a keep captured, I'm pretty sure, or we had some kind of Cyrodiil buffs going on there. 
but 1750 recovery still is not bad at all on a heavy armor Dragonite that is focused on getting lots of ultimates, so not bad at all. So that's pretty much covering my stats, um, buffed up, but I'll show you again on the 2H bar other things that I've missed. So about 24,000 health in Cyrodiil, not in Cyrodiil right now, about 34,000 stamina. I would like to have higher stamina, but this is okay for right now. 32% weapon crit. Like you saw, I had 4,500 weapon damage, about 2,400 critical resistance, and then 46 and 43,000 for my spell on physical resistance with 1,750 stam recovery. Health recovery is low for being a vampire. We're not looking at that though. That's not important. And then 600 magical recovery. So all around a very strong build. We have all of our attribute points into stamina, dubious command throne, like I stated, stage four vampirism. Our Munta Stone is the warrior. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna wrap the build up here, guys. If you're interested in some gameplay, there's gonna be gameplay afterwards. I know a lot of people are being a little anal about me not putting gameplay in my build, saying that build videos are supposed to have gameplay or something like that. I don't know. I thought gameplay videos had gameplay and builds had builds. But anyways, um, so if you want to watch gameplay, that's towards the end of the video. If you don't want to watch gameplay, you can just click out now. But before you do that, make sure you like the video if you like the builds, dislike if you don't like the builds, uh, so I know to what I need to work on. And leave a comment in the comment section below stating what you didn't like or what you did like, or anything I can work on, or any other questions, comments, or concerns. Just let me know down in the comment section below. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So with that, I will see you all next time.